Hello, DP Review TV viewers. This is Don Komarechka back for another fun episode digging into the science and how we can maybe mesh some science with art together. Today, we're going to be playing with fire. Now, not just playing with fire, understanding it, and using the puzzle piece approach of figuring out what fire actually is, and then how to use that for artistic intent. Stay tuned. As a child, I was always fascinated by fire. Uh, as I'm sure a lot of kids are, and only as an adult did I really realize that fire isn't just orange. You know, take this uh, antique coal stove that I have here that burns really clean anthracite coal. It's actually much cleaner than any uh, really efficient wood stove to have this thing running. Um, but if you take a look inside, this thing burns uh, with a blue flame. And those are hydrocarbons. They're mostly benzene and, um, and methane that are coming off. It's not unlike what you'd find normally in natural gas, which we have in our natural gas furnace, or you would also have on a natural gas stove. And these blue flames are interesting, but it begs the question, what color could fire be if it doesn't always have to be orange? Uh, what makes different colored fire? And again, how can we play with that? How can we make that into something fun and artistic down the road once we start putting these puzzle pieces together? Okay, let's gather some more puzzle pieces here. Uh, I have with me a, um, an experiment. Now, I'm prepared. I've got a welding blanket that's thermally resistant. I've got water. I've got a fire extinguisher in case something goes wrong. And of course, safety glasses. Now, uh, what I have in front of me here is hexamethylene tetramine, I believe, if I can remember that correctly. Yes, I can. Um, and I have three different powders. I've got copper powder, I've got zinc powder, and I have tin powder. Now, these are uh, from a kit. Uh, kudos to Mel Science for putting these kits together. They're normally designed for kids, but I have just as much fun with them. Um, the solid fuel burns at around 1300 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's more than hot enough to create an effect where the actual metals, these elements, will burn under that flame and we'll be able to see some interesting colors. So, let's get started. Uh, I'm going to light a, uh, a stick, with something so that I don't have a direct flammable source right next to the uh, very, I don't want to say volatile, but very hot subject here. So let's get that going and burning. I'm gonna film this in high speed to see what the end result looks like. So now that that is going, um, let's try and put in some of our liquids. Let's, uh, or liquid solids here. Let's put in tin and let's see what tin does. Oh, that was pretty cool actually. Okay, how about zinc? Oh, that's very blue, very cool. Um, copper, I think, is my favorite, and I've always known this one. It goes green, and green is just such a fun color for fire. Now, why does copper actually turn green? Why do these things have different colors? That's an important thing to consider. Let me put this fire out here first. Ooh, that was cool. So when you have, uh, you know, copper, for example, uh, it oxidizes to be green. That's why you see copper roofs that turn green over time. What happens when you heat it up? is that the, uh, the copper itself, uh, the atom uh, with the electrons floating around, the a nucleus orbiting around rather, um, when they get this intense heat, they go to a, uh, a wider orbit. And they decay from that orbit very, very quickly. They can't stay there, it's an unstable state. And in doing so, um, they give off energy and they give it off as light, visible light that we can see in the greenish color spectrum. Um, now, this is also a similar phenomenon to fluorescence, where if you have an ultraviolet light that hits onto a particular subject, then that will uh, create visible light by that same mechanism of exciting electrons very briefly, then going back to their original orbits and giving off light. So I've got greens and blues and other colors that I can play with, but this is just a visual ingredient. How do I make this into art? Well, that comes next. All right, so I went out and I bought a bouquet of flowers, uh, partly because one of the flowers in this bunch was interesting, a thistle flower of sorts. Uh, and these thistle flowers are pretty interesting because they're kind of conical and it's almost gonna be like a torch. If I light a fire in the middle of that and then add color to it, well, hopefully magic will happen and I uh, don't start a giant fireball here, but 
We're about to find that out. So I'm gonna go turn off the lights and I'm gonna continue this experiment with the lights a little bit dimmer so that I can see exactly what's happening here and hopefully capture it on this camera. Let's try a different color. Oh, and that ends that experiment. <laughs> Too much came out, extinguished the fire. But I think I might have gotten a good shot in the process. Let's find out. There it is. We got something useful. What else can we do? All right, so keeping these experiments going, I have this uh, beautiful crystal sample here that uh, it's got all sorts of ins and outs to it. The, the crystal structures that are all poking in many different directions, it's very dynamic. And uh, see what happens. Uh, it's not doing anything nearly as interesting as the previous one. Fizzled out. Nothing. I have another idea. Okay, well, generally not as artistic as some of those previous attempts. I did want to touch on magnesium. It's one of the very first things used, at, in, usually in powdered form, uh, for camera flashes when photography was first invented. Uh, and it burns really, really brightly, and a tiny little strip of it can be ignited with just a lighter. Let's take a look. pretty intense. <laughs> uh, so that's what camera flashes were originally uh, created with. And I'm glad we use xenon flash tubes for most of the time now, um, because that doesn't look safe. Well, that was a fun episode, everybody. Thank you very much for watching DP Review TV. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, be sure that you follow me on social media, on Instagram and Twitter, uh, and also DP Review TV. All of their new articles and stories are very interesting, at least for people like me, which probably means people like you as well. Um, there will be more of this stuff to come. So again, if you have any other ideas for me to explore, please let me know and we can put them into a future episode. Until then, take care. Thanks, everybody. But there is one more thing. What happens if I take the Lyoa 24 millimeter probe lens, encase the end of it in steel wool and light it on fire? Let's find out.